Why should I not vote? Consent to UN global tyranny, what we aren't told. Vote, vote, vote. Vote left, vote right, vote blue, vote red, vote libertarian, vote green. Vote local, vote state, vote national. Vote against racism, vote against the bankers, vote against fascism, vote against tyranny. Voting is a voice. Voting is a privilege for citizenship. Voting is patriotism and pride in the nation. Voting is a responsibility. Voting is representation for taxation. Voting is your power. Vote for positive change. Money, jobs, education, healthcare, social security, safety, security, and even roads. Vote Biden. Vote Trump. Vote Jorgensen. Vote Hawkins. Vote corporate power. Vote up. Vote down. Vote in. And vote out. These are all legally valid reasons to vote, but the media and even the attorneys we rely upon aren't giving us the full, unbiased examination that the act of voting deserves. What are the legal implications of voting? Is voting helping, or is voting impeding progress? Should we vote? First, let's briefly examine whether or not voting is a right or a privilege. Noah Millman states, The Constitution presumes that the voting franchise is a privilege rather than a right. We can see evidence of this through the disenfranchisement of convicted felon voting rights. The only way to be able to disenfranchise felons of the act of voting is by first enfranchising voting as a privilege for we the people. And in using the word franchise, we are talking about franchises like McDonald's, Starbucks, Subway, Taco Bell, and Chick-fil-A. Voting cannot be a natural right because there are no natural representative governments. Governments among people must consciously be formed by people. They do not exist naturally on their own without humans empowering the legal fiction and believing in it. So voting is for legal fictional persons called citizens. The highest level of international legal personality is the United Nations National. See episode 11, Who are UN Nationals, the One Global Citizenship? Every Earth human is converted into a One World Order global citizen under the United Nations Paris Peace Treaty of 1947, Article 78. This can also be found in the Law of Peace, Volume 1, Department of Army, 1979. That is to say, what we call the United States citizen or citizen of the United States is just a specialized version of being a UN national. The same way that any U.S. state citizenship is, for the most part, based upon federal U.S. citizenship, U.S. citizenship is based upon being a United Nations national legal presence. This artifact of U.S. citizenship was never intended by the founders of the United States. It is a result of legalization, federalization, and then internationalization of nearly everything in America and the planet. In the U.S., we are citizens of the state, not the federal government. See Anna von Rietz. This pyramidal structure is how the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights becomes applicable to you, and the United Nations has some power to push on governments to respect those declared human rights. However, these human rights are not what they seem, and exist to empower each member nation with police state powers, with given privileges and obligations as international state persons at the expense of humanity and even our human beingness. The UN is implementing mass public human slavery. What does the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights say about voting? Article 21.3 The will of the people shall be the basis of authority of government, and this will shall be expressed in periodic and genuine elections which shall be by universal and equal suffrage, and shall be held by secret vote or by equivalent free voting procedures. This is written in legalese, not English. The meaning of will, translated from a legalese, is a legal document executing your estate upon death. They do not mean the common English definition of will, meaning order, choice, command, or intent. The death will designates the basis of authority of government because your legal presence, as its own separate legal fictional imaginary artificial person corporation, is declared lost at sea at the statutory age of seven, deceased, and your body conveyed to the government through that estate in an uppercase name. Your legal presence name, in all caps, is the corporate estate that conveys your body, your mind, your DNA, your biometric data, and your soul to government by their own decree and your consent and contract without telling us. If you have no death will, that's okay. By the function of being a citizen of your country, you automatically grant your government the authority to create and operate your estate without a proper will. Voting and registering to vote is a statement that you are civil litter mortis, or in English, dead in the eye of the law.
Having an executing will, as a currently deceased legal fictional entity, mind you, is the basis of governmental authority according to the United Nations. The damage caused by such state of being is remedied with nothing but voting and being represented by public servants claiming to be leaders, doing their own will rather than ours. By this definition and surrounding legal dissection alone, we can see that voting is what gives authority to government to operate the way it does. We are seeing government tyranny spread worldwide. The corruption and crimes against humanity is getting worse every day. Governments destroy our rights until we stand up and say no, and even then they will do everything they can to gaslight us into being victimized more. But we must overstand the process by which we give the government power to act as tyrannous as it does. Voting is that mechanism for agreeing to authority, authoritarian government tyranny, according to the United Nations. Voting legally gives the government consent to enact its military police state medical tyranny. It doesn't matter which side we vote for. Both sides are pro-corporate, pro-war, pro-dehumanizing us into artificial persons called legal presences which are nothing more than property of the state. If we confuse ourselves with their legal presence for us, we are ignorantly enslaving ourselves. We give government permission to treat us as human chattel government-owned and operated property by claiming that we want our only remedy to be voting, by saying we want to be citizens of our own country. It is your will after all. That is how twisted the governments are that the United Nations has created against us. Which slave master will you vote for? In registering to vote, we give the government everything we are, everything we own, everything we were and could be to the government, even our own children, our DNA, and our soul. By voting, we are claiming to be state property under a system of mass public slavery. This is how they can mandate masks, social distancing, shutting down small businesses, and even vaccines through the artificial person legal presence that represents you in their slavery system, but is not you. Simply registering to vote is consent to, but more so, an adhesion contract with the United Nations global military dictatorship and condoning and supporting their tyranny without even knowing it. Once we register to vote, there is only one location in the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights where our US Constitution is referenced and has power and authority. However, it is not referenced in an enforceable way. UN UDHR Article 8 Everyone has the right to an effective remedy by the competent national tribunals for acts violating the fundamental rights granted him by the Constitution or by law. The U.S. Constitution does not grant rights and neither does law. They grant privileges called civil rights, like the privilege to vote, the privilege to drive, the privilege to state protection, and the privilege to justice and laws. As such, the competent national military tribunals that we globally call local courts are not required by international human rights to honor any nation's or state's constitutions. There are no constitutional protections when saddled with being a UN national, specialized as a US citizen. Simply registering to vote is consent and contract for the United Nations to subvert the US Constitution in the most serious and insidious of ways. Article 8 documents that all courts globally have been converted from proper land government courts at some point in the recent or long past into military tribunals by and under the belligerent United Nations. Tribunals are what military courts are called. They operate on the principle of guilt until proven innocent. That's what we are experiencing today across the globe, and the police gaslight us that they are treating us as innocent until proven guilty, even though that is not how their global military tribunals operate. The police are just as ignorant as most of us, but they believe they know better. That makes their unknowing deception that much more insidious. The formation of United Nations is from the belligerent nations from World War II, and they are still belligerent. The UN does not bring global peace. Their belligerency is merely managed by the United Nations so as to wage global war against humanity. The Allies won the right to global domination from the Nazis, and they very much used their superior position to install their own global military dictatorship on behalf of the City of London and Vatican. The global deep state controllers won World War II. Humanity lost. The United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights is the most supreme document of human slavery that ever could be. Comment below if you want to see a video series on the UNUDHR being the definitive document of human slavery.
The United Nations is so powerful that they formed their own fourth sovereign city-state out of New York City itself, right under our noses, without us even knowing. Annex 1 to the United Nations Headquarters Agreement with the United States explicitly provides that the UN can widen their territory from their 18 acres of their headquarters to the entirety of the state of New York. We have direct evidence that New York City is owned and operated by the United Nations. New York City issues birth certificates separate from the state of New York, just as the District of Columbia issues birth certificates separate from Virginia and Maryland. For more information, see Episode 4, United Nations, the Fourth Sovereign City State of New York City. Donald Trump has a New York City birth certificate, and he does not have a State of New York birth certificate. He is only eligible for presidency on a legal technicality that the UN New York City has taken over all of the State of New York. Simply registering to vote, let alone voting itself, is consent and agreement to the police state medical tyranny we see around us. The global military dictatorship has existed as the United Nations since its formation in 1945. If you do not consent to this state of the world, then you cannot vote. There is no more voting for the lesser of two evils. Government itself is evil. Government is slavery. Thank you, Mark Passio, for your productivity on the great work. Welcome one and all, you're watching What on Earth is Happening. I'm your host, Mark Passio. My website, whatonearthishappening.com. Ladies and gentlemen, government is slavery. And here on What on Earth is Happening, we are ending slavery one mind at a time. Vote. Vote for your own empowerment. We don't need governments owning us, controlling us, treating us like corporations and artificial things in the imagination of delusional attorneys. There is no vote to stop the government treating us like their property conveyed through citizenship, international legal personality. The United Nations' own words regarding voting is definitive proof that voting only makes our enslavement by government worse, not better. One last thing, the head of the United Nations Global Military Dictatorship is the Secretary General Antonio Guterres. The position is literally a military general that keeps secrets. We see here a picture of the United Nations military soldiers because the UN does have their own military as a government of governments. They are not here to protect our rights, but to protect the global criminal cabal deep state in the image of helping us. Voting is not the only choice and remedy. Our choice every moment is our vote. Be present, not represented, represented by those more ignorant than you. Vote to be your natural being without their legal presence, without their violence, without their corporate tyranny. Like, subscribe, notify, and share.